Hello, today I'm going to be going over the Dirac equation, which is just an equation for, it's the wave equation for a quantum mechanical relativistic particle. So, in non-relativistic quantum mechanics, uh, a quantum particle is governed by the Schrodinger equation, and in a video previously, which I have the link to, we showed that the first attempt to make the Schrodinger equation relativistic led to the Klein-Gordon equation, where because of its nature, so del squared is just d mu, d mu, d mu, just del t, it's just the four um, derivatives. So, you know, delta time, change the x, change the y, change the z, that's just the del operator. So because of its nature as a, a second time derivative, we could interpret this not as a, a relativistic single particle equation, but as a, a field. So the, the solutions are the, the field. It's just a scalar, massive quantum field. So, but don't, don't worry about that now. We want uh, a single particle equation. So what we could do, what an idea of doing this is we just like break break this up the attempt to get rid of this the second order so we could do this when we factor it out we get back this equation but the, the issue with this is that taking a square root of a differential operator is not well defined it's not defined at all so we can't do this but Dirac came up with a really good solution. So he had to define a new operator, which is just del slash squared is equal to some matrices. It's an object. So and what these are. They're called gamma matrices. So, so, and there's four gamma matrices. They're four by four matrices for each space-time component. So the time component is just two by two, just zero. The identity matrix by two identity matrix in this. So the identity matrix is just one. This is a time component. The spatial component, the X component, is this, sigma X. And what these sigma X's are, they're the, they're spin matrices. So they're two by two matrices, just like this. Um, and what you do is if you if you act this on a state, um, a single particle state, it shows you the probability that that particle is in the the x direction, either spin up or spin down. So there's two eigenvectors that go with this matrix, spin up and spin down. And just tells you the probability that it's in the that the spin is located in the x direction. So I'll try to make it more symmetrical. So likewise, the gamma matrix, the second gamma matrix, is just the spin component in the y direction, where that equals s i i zero, and the z direction. So a nice property about this comes when you square the, if you square the gamma matrix, these these gamma matrices, the algebra they they obey. So let's just say we square the time component. Rolls that'll just give us 
that just gives us one. So if we square gamma one, what we get back is, take this minus squared zero zero. And for all these sigma matrices, so sigma x squared plus equals sigma squared equals sigma z squared equals one. So that just gives us one, negative one. And likewise, two and three, they both give us one as well. So another really good thing about these gamma matrices is they abide by something called Clifford algebra. It's not the, the big red dog. So pretty much what this means is they're anti-commuting. So we could define um, a symbol for the anti-commutator, which looks like this. So in this definition, it's just sigma mu, sigma nu, plus sigma nu, sigma mu equals two g mu nu, where g mu nu. So if you can see, you can just plug in. So if you have like, if mu and nu are zero, zero like gives us one, or it gives us two, because one plus one, two, easy math. Um, and then if you have one and two, you know, zero and one, so if mu does not equal nu, then this object is zero. It turns out to be zero. So that's a very good property. But anyways, going forth like one, one, that's negative one plus negative one, negative two. So this is actually G mu nu is one, negative one, negative one, negative one, four dimensions. So then, you know, these gamma matrices, so one plus one, two, minus one, minus one, two, so, you know, it's just the, uh, the square component of that. All right, so this is, a, this is a great insight, because now what we could do is we are going to expand this bad boy, and we're gonna show plus just for for sake of room so i is one so we're going to sum over these these indices i think we could write in that notation but yeah so it's just you know gamma one and w gamma two w and because of that that relation because this abides by Clifford algebra. All that is is just you get back del squared. Okay, so now, so now we could write the uh, you know using this relativistic dispersion relation, adding it to Schrodinger equation. We could just substitute. Say that make this substitution del squared plus m squared and now we could factor this so because we know the square root of this del slash square is just mu um, gamma gamma times um, del so say that is just And we can just multiply this by i. That's like the standard convention. And now we could say one of these is just the, is just an operator on the state. So you see, yeah, like it's nice for single, it's linear. So we just say that this we just say, I think the, the convention is you just take this one, 
find that as an operator on the state. Psi. And then bam. We get the Dirac equation. And now we could talk about relativistic single quantum mechanical particles. Um, we're going to find the solution to this equation in the next video. And yep, so stay tuned and subscribe. Peace in space time. It's good.